Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 lists out of pointless things. Why are we flying by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 is the Bubbling Cauldron at Gromgall Base Camp. And I picked this cauldron because I wanted a basic cauldron on this list. And this is probably one of my favorite ones because I always think of this one because there's so many quests tied into it at Gromgall. Uh, it looks cool. It's got the green steam coming out or whatever it is. I don't know. Uh, and it's got the skulls already in there because there's a bunch of skull quests you have to do with this cauldron. It's located right next to Nimboya. And Nimboya is a jungle troll located here, and he's come from Orgrimmar to search for his chief's youngest son, Yeniku. Believing him to be in possession of the blood scalp trolls, he wants the head of their witch doctor, Nezliok the Dire, uh, so he can force the whereabouts of his quarry from his dead lips. Ultimately, the adventurers are able to retrieve his soul, although his body is still under Zanzel the Outcast control. There's like, it's a giant quest line. There's so much stuff going on here, but I really think this cauldron's cool. You know, it's from Classic WoW. It dates way back. It's got a lot of stuff tied to it. So, you know, it's not the craziest, but I think it's pretty neat. So that's why... It's number 10. Nine. Number nine is this creepy cauldron in Dire Mall. And this is one I've seen referenced a lot all over because there is a dead man impaled in it on some sort of stick or something. I don't know, but uh, it's it's weird to find things like this in World of Warcraft because you don't normally expect it, but it's, it's creepy. Like, I think ogres did this. Probably that ogre right over there. But I was trying to figure out if there'd be any lore reason for this. Like, did the ogres really hate somebody and they're like, we're gonna cook that guy up, right? Or... You know, did somebody do something? Was there? I don't know. So I was looking into it and there's absolutely nothing. I think it's just the ogres got mad and they decided to cook somebody. But I did find one thing. So I was like, maybe if I look into the ogre Warcraft wiki page, it'll be something. And I found under cuisine, when eating humans, ogres prefer to devour them alive due to it being fresher. When it is cooked, however, the body is cooked with the blood still inside the carcass. Night elf meat is considered as tasting horrible. On top of that, the staple diet of ogres is fresh meat. Ogres like their food fresh and are thus known to keep their prisoners alive until they are ready to serve. So those are references to the World of Warcraft official cookbook, not the strongest of lore sources. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know what? It's something. And I don't think it really explains this at all because they still are like cooking him a lot. I don't know. But... I think that was cool to find out. So that's why the Dire Mall Cauldron is number nine. Eight. Number eight is the Ruby Feast Cauldron. And the Ruby Feast is located in Valdraken. And it actually is an achievement where you have to experience all of the dishes served at the Ruby Feast, ranging from lemon silver leaf tea all the way to druidic dream salad and ravenberry panna cotta delight. But that's besides the point. The main point here is the cauldron. And the cauldron's really cool. It's more of a flat cauldron as opposed to a lot of the rounder cauldrons. It hangs from these big chains attached way up in the ceiling. And in fact, the, the chef that's putting stuff into the cauldron, he has to stand on boxes to throw things into the cauldron. Now, I don't actually know what they're making in the cauldron, uh, because I was looking through all the different things that you can taste, and I guess maybe it'd be lemon silver leaf tea, uh, or maybe dragon fruit punch. It could actually be dragon fruit punch. That looks like, I th although I think dragon fruit's more like pinkish, right? Pinkish red. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The main point here is that the cauldron looks really cool, and it's in this big outdoor kitchen, and I think it's just, it's a really cool area. The aesthetic's really nice, and that's why the Ruby Feast Cauldron is number eight. Seven. Number seven are the Zandalari Voodoo Cauldrons, and the Voodoo Cauldrons are blue, red, green, and purple cauldrons found on the Isle of Reckoning in Kunlai Summit. And up until I made this video, I actually had no idea that this even existed, like straight up. This is from Mr. Pandaria, and I had no idea this was a thing. So the main thing here is that you can actually interact with the cauldron. So the Voodoo Brew is dressed like a Zandalari witch doctor. Zandalari trolls think you're friendly, dance with your fellow witch doctors. The mysteriously tasty concoction is mastery increased by nine for one hour. The hexer's touch is attacks have a chance to hex your target. And the maggot slurry is you don't feel so great. But not only do these cauldrons provide fun little interactions, but they've actually got cool steam coming from each one. And after looking into it a bit more, it just seems that these are kind of pointless. But it's like how we said, inside pointless things are treasure. These are just fun little interactions that you discover out in the world. 
and you know there's no achievements no quests but it's fun it's fun to explore and see little things like this and be like wow that was really cool and that's why the zandalari voodoo cauldrons are number seven six number six is the cursed cauldron in the hellfire peninsula in front of zethgore and this is an objective of the bleeding hollow blood quest where you boil the blood for the quest boiling blood <laughs> And when you use the cauldron with the blood, a large number of cursed scarabs appear and then they scurry around and you can just kill them. But I always remember doing this quest in Burning Crusade and it also has that kind of cool colored steam coming out of it, much like the voodoo cauldrons we just talked about. Uh, but I love how this cauldron is just going insane. It's just like... <laughs> and I always just remember doing this quest and thinking like, wow, that cauldron is going crazy, man. Like that is that blood is really boiling in there. And, you know, it's a it's a bit bigger than some of the other cauldrons we've seen. So that's pretty cool as well. But I'm not going to lie. The main reason I wanted this cauldron on the list is because I just have nostalgia doing this quest. And I, I don't even think I like doing the quest that much. But for some reason, whenever I think of cauldrons, this is one of the quests that I think of. And so I was like, you know what? It's got to be on the list. And that's why the cursed cauldron is number six. Five. Number five is the communal pot cauldron at the Tuscar area in the Azure Span. And this is where Big Canuke, the master of soups, does the big Tuscar soup event thing and everyone helps him make soup and it's a great time. I also always have to mention that it used to be master of stews and through the power of my pointless top 10 Azure Span video back in the beta, helped change it from stew to soup based on my intense research of the two types of food. So really, I helped impact World of Warcraft in a massive way because could you imagine master of stews that would just it would be wrong anyway aside from that we're here to talk about the actual cauldron which is fantastic it's got all the ropes going around it it's got the hooks off the side it's got the the ropes that are like tying it down uh it's got the fish hanging off the side too i just i love the aesthetic of this whole cauldron and the whole area i mean just think of this big pot of soup in this ice cold environment everyone's like huddled up and they're like dude the big soup right this big boiling cauldron pot uh, is just that, that warmth, that, that hearth that you're looking for, right? Did I use the word hearth correctly there? I don't think I did, but you kind of get the point. <laughs> I also love the feast animation they go through because it reminds me of Monster Hunter a lot, and I'm someone that's really bad at Monster Hunter, but I always love the aesthetic of it as well, so I always appreciate that, and that's why the communal pot cauldron is number five. Four. Number four is this giant cauldron in Razor Fen Crowl. And I found this cauldron because somebody posted on the internet them getting stuck in it with their party in Razor Fen Crowl. And I was like, dude, there's a big cauldron in Razor Fen Crowl. So I went and found it. And it's actually pretty sweet. They got a bunch of lumber and wood all over. They got a little cauldron next to the big cauldron. I don't really know why. Uh, there's like a big platform that leads up to it, obviously, so they can like throw stuff in it. I don't know if one of them's cooking like a sauce and the other big ones cooking like the main thing like I don't know what they're cooking in there just are they going full dire mall ogre and cooking people in there are they like what are they doing so uh I actually looked up quillbor eating because we may as well just look up what everybody eats at this point and the quillbor and the barons are protective of the water in the area even a small water source is a vast hoard of wealth to them they have great feasts when even the slightest rain comes to the barons. Water is sacred to their kind because it is so scarce. So again, that really tells us absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, so like, I don't know what they're doing. Are they throwing boars in this pot? I don't know. They're doing something with it. Uh, if you have any theories about what they're cooking in this big pot, or I just missed something, let me know in the comments section below. Maybe there's something in RFK that I completely missed for why they have this big cauldron in there. Uh, but either way, it's a really cool big cauldron, and that's why it's number four. Three! Number three is the Half Hill Market Cauldron in the Valley of the Four Winds, next to Mei Mei Iron Paw and Noodles the Hosen. And from the looks of it, it looks like they're cooking up some noodles and maybe tofu? It looks like big blocks of tofu or something, I guess, but I have no idea. But I think this cauldron looks really cool. It's got the gold plating around the outside, and I think it's more stone than it is anything else, which I think a stone cauldron is actually pretty sick. One thing I did find weird is that Noodles sells spices, sage fish delight recipe, smoked sage fish recipe, spring water, and simple flour. So it doesn't actually sell any noodles, but I guess he sells you the flour to make noodles, but... I was expecting noodles to sell me more noodles, so a little disappointing there, but that's besides the point. The main point here is that the cauldron is really cool, and then I loved, I just love the aesthetic of the Valley of the Four Winds, especially the Half Hill Market, right? You've got 
all the different foods all around. You've got everybody cooking. You've got the, you know, just green everywhere. Everything just feels very fresh and vibrant. And I just, I love this area. I think Valley of the Four Winds is maybe one of my favorite places uh, in World of Warcraft at this point. Uh, another fun fact is that Mei Mei Ironpaw actually traveled to Iskara in Azur Span on the Dragon Isles. So she's probably helping the chef with the soup. I didn't even realize that. So a uh, little, little tie in right there, but... Overall, I love this cauldron, I love this area, and that's why I had to put it high up on the list, and that's why it's number three. Ooh! Number two is the Cauldron of Creation in Meldraxxus, and this is where you craft a plague-born slime from in Maraleth's Cauldron. So, it's the Cauldron of Creation, but it's also Plague Divisor Maraleth's Cauldron, and he says... While I know we're both eager to complete our potion, I believe the best lesson I can share with you is patience. And slimes, of course. With the help of slimes, we'll have our laboratory back in working condition. Uh, so pretty much, you help him get his lab back in order, and I love that the little slimes also have their own little cauldrons on top of their head. That's one of the reasons I moved it up the list, because I was like, dude, I love the little slime cauldron, guys. <laughs> Uh, then there's just big slime man chilling out. It's it's honestly kind of a cool quest. It's one of those things where it happened in Shadowlands, so either I forgot about it completely or I never did it. It's one of the two. But apparently Plague Divisor Maraleth is a prominent necromancer of the House of Plagues, and he was a close confidant of Margrave Stratama, who was the final boss of Plaguefall. She's the big, like, slime queen lady but was driven insane by the fallout of his house's destruction and mistakenly believes adventurers to be his apprentice. But overall, I mean, this is a cool cauldron. It's got that, you know, standard cauldron vibe, very round, kind of pumpkin looking, but it's got the little gold things on it, like the gold plated, I don't know, decals or whatever you want to call them. And then I love just the, the skeleton hands kind of holding them up as well. I think it's a very creepy, cool cauldron. And I, again, I love the little cauldrons on the slime guys. So that's why... It's number two. One. And number one are the Plague Cauldrons in the Western Plague Lands. And when I thought up this list, the first cauldrons that came to mind were these cauldrons. Like, I just, whenever I think of a cauldron in World of Warcraft, these are the cauldrons that I think of. Just these big, smoking, bubbling cauldrons held down by the chains in the farmlands of Western Plague Lands. So, plague cauldrons are giant cauldrons filled with vile toxins and poisons of the Scourge. Infused with the necromantic sorcery of Kel'Thuzad, these cauldrons are constantly boiling and spewing the plague of undeath into the air, corrupting and twisting the land and empowering the agents of the Scourge. Each of the cauldrons has its own unique mix of toxins and is guarded by a cauldron lord with a retinue of formidable Scourge soldiers. The enchanted cauldrons were masterminded by the necromancer Hagen the Unclean. That's right, the, the safety dance guy. <laughs> and in preparation for the siege on the Northlands, the cauldrons were moved to Kel'Thuzad's recent acquisition, the Barov Manor on Seir Darrow, Seir Darrow Skolomance, uh, where the Plague of Undeath was perfected within them. Using samples from the cauldrons, Kel'Thuzad began to poison the grain shipments exported from Anderhal, thus dooming the populace of Lordaeron to the plague. After Arthas's final purge of the region, the cauldrons were ordered to be placed in the various fields around Anderhal by Araj the Summoner to help support the Scourge forces in the area. So, actually, really interesting lore. I didn't know any of that until I read into it, but you think I would as somebody who's played WoW for, like, almost 20 years, right? But... <laughs> You always learn something, and that's what I always enjoy with these videos as well, but overall, they're just really cool cauldrons, they're very nostalgic, very memorable, and actually very lore-related, I guess, so that's why the Plague Cauldrons are number one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, if you want to check out more Pointless Top 10s, we just had spiders last week if you want to stick with the creepy Halloween theme, and a couple weeks ago we also had taverns if you want more of an autumnal, cozy type of vibe. Okay? Okay. So you.